Tesla is generally accepted to be the king of electric vehicle charging. Tesla's superchargers are simple and easy to use, and they require no pre-verification, credit cards, RFID tags, or smartphone apps. Charging itself is stupidly fast, with Tesla's latest supercharger V3 stations managing speeds in excess of 1,000 miles of charge per hour, at least on paper. But despite all of this and the excellent work that Tesla has done shaking up the automotive industry to prove that electric vehicles can be desirable, sporty and practical. There's one thing that Tesla hasn't yet solved. The length of time it takes to charge that final 10, 15 or 20 percent. Yet one automaker does seem to have done so. Enter Audi and the e-tron SUV. While well, Audi's range per charge, 204 miles from the car's 95 kilowatt hour battery pack, seems absolutely laughable, more on that in a minute, its rapid charging is pretty amazing. Unlike most automakers, Tesla included, who have to taper off rapid charging speeds to well below 50 kilowatts for the final 15 or 20% of charging, the e-tron SUV is very different. It's capable of charging at up to 150 kilowatts from empty all the way up to 75% full, then tapers off to just a measly 100 kilowatts at 80% fully charged. Even when it's charging the final 10% of its battery, charge levels are in excess of 50 kilowatts. The reason for this is pretty simple. While the e-tron SUV has a nominal battery capacity of 95 kilowatt hours, Audi uses far less of that capacity than most other automakers would. Before I go any further into explaining why I think Audi hit a home run on this, I'm going to just address a couple of details relating to high power charging and charge tapering. I should also note that while Audi has just recalled some e-trons to fix an issue with the battery packs, the recall is to fix a rubber grommet on the battery case that could let moisture in and ultimately cause issues with short circuits over the long term. Not as some people have tried to claim, because Audi's battery chemistry is somehow unsafe. As batteries near full capacity, it becomes ever harder to push electrons into the battery pack. Try dumping a high charging current into a nearly full battery, and you'll just end up overheating the battery and losing a lot of energy. And so, the battery management system in every electric car, when charged at high power rates, will taper off the charge power as the battery nears its full state of charge. It's like a tube train in the rush hour. The more people on the train, the harder it is for other people to get on board quickly. Normally, this tapering happens after the battery reaches somewhere between 40 and 60% full. This, by the way, is why it's often better when on a long distance trip in a long range electric car to run the battery to almost empty, then rapid charge to 50 or 60%, then drive to the next charging station. It actually saves you time in the long run since you're only charging your car when charge rates are at their peak. How much the battery charge tapers off depends on different factors like the outside temperature, how hot the battery pack is, and how the cells inside the battery pack are arranged, as well as the chemistry of those cells. But it's also influenced by how much of the pack's nominal battery capacity is actually made available for the driver to use. The more of that nominal capacity made available for use, the more likely it is that the charge tapering will happen sooner and it will be more extreme. The less capacity used, the more likely it is that the car will be able to charge at higher rates for much longer. Nissan, for example, makes a fair chunk of the Leaf's nominal battery capacity available to use, which is why it has quite extreme charge tapering. The Tesla Model S and Model X recently made a little more of their battery capacity available to use through a firmware update. This is after Tesla examined the long-term health of its battery packs and concluded it could make a little more capacity available. Tesla's Model 3, meanwhile, which I should note uses a different cell design to the cells in Model S and X, can charge at higher sustained rates than its siblings. Tesla may have the edge on initial charging speed, and if you're charging from empty to say 50% full, Tesla will refuel its cars far more quickly than anyone else out there. But when it comes to the uniformity of charging and charging speed, the Audi e-tron beats everyone. It does come at the expense of additional capacity and range, but it's important for one thing. 
user experience. Look, if you're watching this channel, the chances are you're already fairly knowledgeable about electric vehicles and charging them. And you probably understand that charging from 80% to 100% takes forever when you compare it to the first bit of the charge cycle. But your average car driver doesn't. They're used to just turning up at the petrol station, flipping open the filler cap, and then just filling up. They may just put a few gallons or litres in. They may opt to put a set monetary amount in. Or they might just fill it all the way up. And yes, while fuel pumps do taper their filling rate a little towards the end of filling up, <laughs> you probably didn't even notice this, but they do, the user experience is, for the most part, completely unrelated to how full the car is when you pull up or how full you need the car to be when you leave. Being ready to sacrifice time in order to get that full charge, or sacrificing range in order to charge quickly, isn't exactly something that those who have used a gas car all their life are likely to want to do when they switch to electric. Knowing that they plug in and fill up and that the last bit of charging is going to be relatively quick and give you a consistent range per fill is far more palatable. It's more predictable and it's more likely to be acceptable to an end user who just wants to come in, fill up and move on. But it's also got some other benefits. First, it avoids the issue of owners hogging charging stations to get the last few percent out of their battery pack because they want it to be full when they leave. And they probably will get upset if you ask them to move on when their car isn't full. Second, it's better for the battery pack, as using less of the battery capacity in everyday charging should theoretically put the battery under less stress and ensure a much longer life. Sure, the e-tron doesn't have the longest range out there, and yes, it's not as far per charge as some of its competitors. But when it comes to user experience and expectations, I think Audi's methods are the ones we should hope other automakers try to emulate. What do you think? That's it. Thanks for watching. Let us know if you liked it or you didn't like it below. Scribble a comment, hit the notification bell and support us through Patreon, Ko-fi or by buying some swag from our swag shop. I'll be back soon with another episode, but until then, Keep evolving!